Welcome to my channel. This is Big Data Guy. In this tutorial series, we are going to be looking at Apache Spark framework, specifically version 3.4 and above. I have another tutorial series created on Apache Spark that you can check out in my um, in my channel. So the purpose of this video is that uh, we are going to look into uh, Spark introduction. Uh, this is going to be a very high level introduction of Spark. If you want to go and uh, look at the uh, the initial um, you know creation of Spark and the difference between Hadoop and Spark go and check out the video that I've linked uh, on the top right section uh, of the video so uh, let's get started so uh, in Spark ecosystem uh, as you can see uh, there is a Spark core this is the core engine that is compatible with multiple language like uh, R Python uh, Scala, Java, and others, and uh, they have built an additional uh, functionality on top of uh, Spark Engine, uh, such as Spark SQL, uh, that is used for generic data processing. And uh, starting from next video, we are going to be looking at uh, Spark SQL extension. It also has Spark Streaming uh, for uh, processing streaming data. MLlib for machine learning workflows uh, on top of Spark and GraphX to process uh, graph related uh, information using Spark. So Spark has two main abstraction. One is known as RDT and other one is DAG which is the direct recyclic graph. Uh, so let's uh, revisit the RDT concept and if you want to know more, more about RDT you can uh, check out the old video that I've created on uh, specifically this topic. Uh, the link to that video is in the top right section of uh, of the uh, of the screen. So to revisit the RDD concept, uh, RDD means resilient distributed data set, and uh, what Spark does is Spark pretty much uh, splits the data across different machines or uh, you know different partitions. So partition can be machine, or it can be just within your own computer as well. But typically, when you are using Spark cluster each of this partition belongs to different different computers. So when you provide it with large data, in this case, let's say we have nine different rows uh, of the data and all these nine records, when you create an RDD, when you feed it to the Spark, it is going to split into across three partition and hopefully it will split it in equal, uh, equal proportion where each of the partition gets equal number of uh, rows. So in this case, as you can see, it's one, two, three, four. Uh, sorry, 1, 2, 3 in partition 1, 4, 5, 6 in partition 2, and 7, 8, 9 in partition 3. And the property of RDD is that they are immutable. So once you create an RDD, if you want to make any changes to that RDD, you have to actually recreate a new RDD. Uh, you cannot change the original RDD, right? And uh, typically when you are actually, you know, creating RDD, uh, in uh, in Spark, you have to make sure that uh, the number of partition that you cre that you create with uh, when you are reading the data, they are greater than the number of cores uh, across your cluster. Uh, that is going to help you uh, gain the maximum amount of parallelism that you would. And uh, we are going to cover this topic in future as well, specifically when we talk about how to increase the efficiency of Spark. So if you do not understand that, that is totally fine. Uh, this is just me providing. Uh, 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 high level information about RDD and revisiting the concept that I have covered in different tutorial video. Okay, so let's talk about the second abstraction which is the DAG also known as direct recyclic graph that is the full form and what happens is that when you write Spark code uh, typically the code does not execute uh, as soon as you know something is uh, written right so um, if you apply some transformation on RDD or a data frame in Spark, it's not going to go and execute that transformation immediately on, on the data frame. It is only when you, you know a certain action uh, is taken, like you know, such as you know, show me the data frame or generate the data frame or you know, collect the data frame, collect the RDD. That's when um, the execution starts, and we are going to cover about actions and transformations in future video. Uh, but all I want you to know is that it's lazy evaluation and what it means is that the code only gets executed when it is absolutely required for uh, you know for it to get executed and we're going to look at it in future how you know uh, how this entire operation works right so entire like 
workflow in Spark is represented using DAG and uh, all the operations, like all the transformations and um, steps that happen um, are represented um, as a graph known as DAG, right? And uh, driver, which is the main computer um, in the Spark cluster is responsible for generating this DAG, right? Um, so you can think of DAG as, as a execution map, right? So step-by-step, uh, procedure where it's going to know that you know first I have to execute step one then step two and then I have to go and combine step one and step two and so on right so it properly like you know divides entire like uh, program into list of steps that it has to execute so the whole process looks like this um, the process of generating the um, DAG and executing the spark program looks like this and I have covered a little bit of like you know how exactly the spark program gets executed in parallel fashion in a different video in in, in my other uh, spark tutorial series and link to that can be found at the top uh, section of the screen so anyways so the entire process of executing spark program is, is as follows so uh, you know uh, first you know the uh, generic graph is going to be con converted which is you know DAG and DAG is going to be represented as list of RDDs so in this case you can see that there are two RDDs that are combined together and the next step is like you know performed and so on and then RDD is going to be converted um, so this graph the the list of RDD uh, and the entire DAG is going to be converted into steps using DAG scheduler so whole idea is that you know you're going to have step one and step two so in step one you can see that uh, sorry, in, in RDD1 and RD2, there are two steps, so step one and step two. So they get executed uh, pretty much, and then, you know, uh, in the next section, there's like three step followed by three step, right? So DAG is converted into group of tasks, and each group of tasks are within, like, you know, stages. So like, you know, this is stage one, this is stage two, stage three, stage four, and, uh, you know, they're executed um, one by one uh, in order to get the final result. And the thing that is responsible for managing all this execution and you know uh, making sure that all steps are uh, all, all stages and all tasks within the stages are executed successfully uh, is task scheduler and what task scheduler does is that it you know picks up one stage and then it pretty much schedules different tasks across different stages so um, you know oftentimes it doesn't execute two stages at the same time it starts with a single stage and it tries to execute multiple tasks parallelly right when the task scheduler tries to execute the DAG and uh, it's similar to master slave architecture that I covered in the other video that I linked at the top right section of the screen uh, that it, it the master the driver is going to schedule all this uh, all this task and send it over to like you know the worker and worker's responsibility is to go and execute the task and provide the result or acknowledgement back to the cluster manager, right? Um, and if the task has failed, then it is a responsibility of cluster manager to go and make sure that, um, you know, they retry the failed task and make sure that entire DAG is executed successfully, right? In order to provide the result. So this is how the Spark program, you know, goes from the actual written code to the final results that you're gonna see. And uh, a lot more information is covered in the other videos that I've linked uh, in, in, in the top right section, right? Okay, and lastly, uh, I just wanted to cover the generic architecture of uh, Spark. So in this, in this case, like, you know, you can see that there are two worker nodes and one driver program, or you can think of it as like master. Uh, and this is where the Spark context lives. Uh, we're gonna learn about what exactly Spark context is in future tutorial but basically uh, what driver program does is that uh, it is responsible for ensuring that you know um, ensuring that the it, it is basically responsible for ensuring um, you know that DAG gets executed across different worker nodes uh, using cluster manager and we covered somewhat of like you know how exactly that works in the previous slide uh, but you can you can imagine that there could be multiple worker nodes going on. So in this case, there's two, but there could be like, you know, potentially 5, 10, 15, or even like, you know, hundreds of worker nodes uh, below one driver program. And, uh, you know, worker node are mainly responsible for caching the uh, intermediate results and also making sure that they execute the tasks, right? 
and the driver program is mainly responsible for managing the overall Spark cluster and making sure that uh, overall uh, you know execution of the program is successful, right? So yeah, this is what I wanted to cover uh, at a high level, uh, just to um, you know get started with the Spark 3.4. The rest of the details I have covered in great depth in uh, other videos, so please be sure to check that out before uh, we get started with the uh, with the you know Spark videos, um, the actual tutorial series. Cool. Thanks. Uh, see you in the next video.